All right, so I wanted to make a quick video about the new Azure Service Bus emulator. I think some of the other videos out there are sort of overcomplicating this and adding extra things into the mix. So I just wanna go through this process as simple as possible to get this emulator up and running on your local dev machine. So for a long time now in Azure, we've had Service Bus, which is an enterprise messaging and queuing system. So you can send tons of messages into a queue and have jobs that pull items off that queue and kind of handle messaging at an enterprise scale. I'm not gonna to get too much into Service Bus itself in this, but that's some quick background. So I have an Azure Service Bus running out here um, in my Code Wolf subscription, and we'll see how this connection compares to the emulator in a second using our local app. Now to follow along, you will need Docker Desktop. This is a dependency of the Service Bus emulator, as we'll see in a moment, so just make sure you have that. Now the instructions for setting this up are actually available in the docs, and we're basically gonna follow this but there's a couple kind of quirks that I wanna work through and give you kind of a streamlined version of this. So there is now this emulator and we have two choices for running this. One is to use an automated script, which is a PowerShell script that will set things up for you. I don't really like this approach personally. I think it kind of hides what's actually going on. And I think that background information is really useful for the developer. Um, if you wanna go with this route, that's fine, but we're gonna use this more manual Docker approach here. And I think that'll be helpful context. So essentially all you have to do to get this emulator running locally is to take these three files that are listed in the docs here. So this is number two and number three, and you just have to copy each of these into a file and then make a couple adjustments to them. And we're gonna go through what each of these files do and then start up the emulator and connect to it. So it's gonna be pretty simple here. Now, if you wanna make things even simpler, I've created this GitHub repository that you can just download and this already has those files in it as well as a sample app that you can run to connect to it and you don't have to worry about copying things and creating a new app and all that. So if you just clone this file, um, you can actually follow along with the steps that I'm going through here. So this GitHub repository has two folders. One is an app that connects to service bus and that's what we see here. So this is just a pretty simple app. This is kind of boilerplate service bus code. Um, we create a service bus client with a connection string and then we create a sender to talk to a queue. So I have a Q1 here, which if we go back to our uh, service bus in Azure, there's a Q1 here. And so right now, if I were to run this app, so I'll just say .NET run, and after a moment it says a batch of three messages has been published to the queue. And so if we go back over to our service bus, um, we can see that those messages did come in here. So there's three incoming messages over here. So this is working, so it's connected to our cloud version of Service Bus, but let's see how to get this working with a local emulator. And so for that, we have this emulator folder, and these are the three files from the docs that I mentioned before. And so let's kind of go through these and talk about what they do. So the first one is config.json, and all this does is configure your Service Bus locally. So you can see it's creating a namespace, so there's always a top level namespace with Service Bus. And then it's creating a queue. So there's our Q1. And so this matches the cloud version of our queue. So here we have Q1 out in Azure, but now we'll have a Q1 locally when this spins up. So this config file sets up your topics and subscriptions and all that. So you can make this as simple or complicated as you want. This is just the one from the docs, kind of the sample version, but we're gonna be working with this queue here. So you'll need this config file. That's the first one. And the second one that's also really important is this Docker Compose. Again, this was another file copied out of that docs example. But if you're unaware, Docker Compose is a tool that lets you work with multi-container apps. So you can kind of orchestrate how they work together and what they do. So if we look at this file closely, first we have one container called Service Bus Emulator, and that points to a container image out there that'll download for you. And it sets up some ports and some environment information. But the key thing here is this depends on, so there's this SQL edge dependency. That's another container down here. And that's because this local emulator, while it's running, it leverages SQL Edge and takes a dependency on that. So there's another container here, and this will spin up as well. If you're not familiar with what SQL Edge is and all this stuff in here, that's fine. You don't actually have to change any of this for this to work. This is just kind of as is. And the same here, you can leave this as is unless you um, wanna change your queues or topics or something like that. Now the last file is this .env file, and this is the only file where you do have to make changes for this app to work. This kind of sets up some essential environment variables for this to run. So the first one is the config path, and that is the path to this config file right here. So if we just right click in VS Code and say copy path, and I'll go over here and paste that in here. 
And then if we look at this accept user agreement, we can change that from no to yes. And then for your password, you just want to fill out something that meets those SQL requirements. So I can say, I don't know, something with Code Wolf here. Uh, that should be fine. And from here, there's a Docker compose command that we run to actually start up these containers. And this doc gives you that as example down here. So there's this Docker compose item here. So we'll copy that. And then let's go over into our terminal and I'll stop our app and clear this. So the thing we have to change here is this path to docker compose file. So here's our docker compose file with our container definitions that we looked at. So let's copy that path. And then let's go back into our command line here. And let's just delete that placeholder and paste in um, our actual path here. But we will have to put that in quotes for that to work correctly. And in this case, I've already run this command. So they just start up really fast and recreate the containers. The first time you run it, it's going to have to pull down those containers, which can take a minute. So just let it download that, and then it'll start up these containers for us. So you can see there's one called SQL Edge and one called Service Bus. And this might be a little hard to see, but if we go out into Docker Desktop, you can see that there's this Service Bus emulator running now. And we can click into this and see that there's actually two of them here. So there's the SQL Edge container, and then there's also this Azure Service Bus emulator. And so if we go in here, we can see some logs where it created the queue, it created the topic, it created all those items from our config file. And so now we have this emulator running locally. And you can see it even says at the bottom, emulator service is successfully up. Now, if we want to connect to this from our app locally, the last thing we have to do is grab this uh, connection string here. But this is another part where there's kind of a, a quirk here. So let's copy this endpoint. And then if we go to our code, all we have to do is replace this connection string. So I'll replace that. And you will need to plug in your port. So it doesn't really say that in the document. But if we go back to Docker, you can see this is running on 5672. So you'll actually want to add in 5672 here, um, and then save that for your connection string. So then we can say .NET run. And there we go. It says three, three messages have been published to the queue. And obviously that's running locally now since uh, we're using that connection string that we added here. So that's really all it takes. You just have to copy these three files in, fill out your environment variables, adjust your queues or topics in here if you want to change some of these settings, and then run the docker compose command based on this file name. That'll start up the emulator and you can connect to it from a local app. So I hope this was helpful. Please hit the subscribe and like buttons and I'll see you next time.